Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. Yes, I am wearing our new shirt. We have a new collection coming, five different items. Coming out on May 5th, we ordered a very limited amount. So I'm just telling you guys now, if you think you want this, May 5th, the store goes live. I highly recommend go buy it. That's all I'm saying about that. I'm gonna introduce you to Ron, who we've just met today. Ron, I've heard about your car from our buddy, Ethan. Ethan, yeah. You know, so he said, hey, there's this guy I know from doing track days and yeah. stuff, Shelby track events days. and what have you. Uh -huh. Willow Frank, yeah. That has this great 65 coupe that you guys really need to shoot. It is 65, right? Yeah, 65 also, that's correct. That's How long you had it for? 15 years. It was a six cylinder. <laughs> Got it and empty, and that's what I started with. Oh, really? I didn't want to do a fastback because I know all the fastback guys would have probably castrated me by ruining a fastback. Lose their mind, so especially I, if it was like a K-code or something like that. So right? I said, I'll do the coupe, and then that's a whole different level of people that don't mind, but I didn't want to butcher a fastback. That's cool, though, to do it with, the, I mean, it drives me nutty when somebody wants to customize a collectible. It's like, don't, do, right. go go find a donor version of that, like that's what right. you did, a that's six right. cylinder rather than yeah, some just, rare bird, you know? Yeah. And, I did I want to do it as street version, but then it got carried away in the cage and my friend helped me with the cage and yeah. I didn't want a cage. He said, if we don't put a cage in it, your wife's gonna shoot me. So we gotta put a cage in it. Cause I wanted to make it, in my opinion, a Jenny Craig car, as light of a coupe that I could. I love it, the Jenny. And that's my goal. <laughs> Hollow bolts, aluminum bolts, things like that, that people don't see, but there's 150 pounds of roll cage in it. Yeah. So that had to be- So what do you weigh? What is this It weighs 2,500. Come on. With 150 pounds of cage in it. Come So on. that puts it at 2350 without fuel in it. You're still under 3,000 pounds yeah. considerably. And it's completely balanced. I'm sitting in the rear footwell area. And some of the vents. pushed everything back. I'm sitting in where people would put their feet if they were in the back seat. So when I do some of the events, the corner workers come over and they say, it looks like I'm driving it from the back seat. <laughs> they probably that was think a compliment. Eight feet tall. <laughs> it, looks, it looks odd, like a limo. Sure. Kind of, it's quite different. You're seeing things from further back, and I, yeah. I love that part. Like you were saying, you know, you worked at BMW for 20 years. Now I install elevators. For install elevators. So you're a mechanical guy. Did you, so did you do the bulk of the build? The bulk of it, yeah. I had my friend, I had an arm in a sling. He did the welding on the cage when I was kind of disabled. Uh -huh. And then uh, some of the flaring he did, not too exotic. You know, I do all the welding and the fabricating in the window. But you can't do it all. Yeah, I love some help here and there for certain. And the items. other thing was to keep the suspension all stock. So the suspension has minimal, I mean, hardly any changes on the front. Factory Mustang suspension, arms, lower, upper. Really? Shelby rear axle with drums. I didn't do any fancy disc work. And T-Bird discs and calipers in the front because that's kind of the thing everybody likes to do. And I believe they had their advantages of being lighter, drum brake being lighter than disc. There's a lot of pieces go together with a disc. And I mean, you track it, so obviously you've got your brakes to where they yeah, work and you, you're the, happy with them. The funny thing is, is a light car, your brakes are like overrated. You know, you don't need a lot of brakes on a light yes, car. Right. And that really became evident. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, other than it wants to come off the ground sometimes on a track because it's not aerodynamic. I put so a spoiler get, on it so you get some to help. To it. I don't know how people drive light cars fast. Yeah. It's, I don't know what to call it. Maybe they have, you know, bigger than I have, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got King Kong bulls. I'm curious because I was noticing when you mentioned the spoiler, I noticed earlier. That's for the tow hook, actually. It That's, is. And that little rubber thing used to cover the back holes where all Mustangs, you can take the rear shocks apart. So I figured I'll put that there and when, I'm, when I crash, I'll remove that and then they can hook the tow hook in without taking the dam off. That's great. Otherwise, That's you gotta have a, another hole. So then it's mounted into the- There's like a hook right behind it. Or, fa or frame or something? Or? To the factory piece that you can hook a tow hook to for the winch. It. Okay. Can we pop the hood and see what you've oh. done? Because this sucker uh, definitely makes noise. Wow, you really did stay fairly stock in the suspension, didn't you? Well, I wanted to keep the Monte Carlo bar and the export brace, because without that, it doesn't look like a Mustang. Towers These two pieces, to me, looks they, they belong on the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the air filter became the limiting factor to how far back I could go. And then yeah. I had to make a new firewall. All it just became the chain reaction of, it's a ball and, you know, it keeps changing. Oh, so right, it just I it wanted to keep snowball. this look. Yeah. But the engine's back five inches and down two and a half. Yeah. You know, could go back a little further, could have got a smaller air filter. Now all that, to me, didn't look right. Yeah, yeah. What is the engine? It's an all aluminum dry sump 363. So I don't know if you know much about dry sump. It's, a, it's basically an engine with a vacuum cleaner in it. And it removes the oil with three fittings in the oil pan and one under the carburetor. So when the engine's spinning, there's no oil on any of the moving parts within reason because it's creating 11 inches of vacuum and sucking all the oil off of it, which in turn wears out quicker. 
because their piston rings don't have much oil on them, but that makes more power. So basically it's a, it's a timed engine that doesn't need to last that long. Do you have a, a mile point? They or? say 100 hours is already at the, end, at the limit. Of really? Kind of, and every idling caspic comes into play, you know. Gotcha. So it has 75 on it now for the last four years. Gotcha. But things wear out without oil on them. Yeah, But yeah. dry sump is, has its advantages because you can lower the engine further where there's an oil pan. Plus the crank isn't swimming it's, through that's a correct. oil, right? Windage, so it can um, rev quicker. And... All windaging is a big factor. Uh -huh. So manufacturers don't use dry sump. I think Corvette just started last five they years. They did, yeah, with that, with the, the new one, right? Correct. The C8. It's guaranteed to put oil on the motor no matter what the tank distance of the, how the car is moving around. Right. It's always pumping oil in a major amount. Right. And pulling it out four different areas. With the vacuum cleaner is the only way I can explain it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I like it when it's... But it, uh, it does it all the time. Because the wet sump, the old version, it's not been proven to be the best in corners. It still has this, you know, criteria of running out of starving oil. Yep. And then the engine just lets you know that it didn't like that. And again, manufacturers don't use it because it's too expensive. Yep. It's that Corvette. Yep. What, what kind of power do you make with this engine? This one is 680. Oh, jeez. And 550 torque. At the wheel or at the crank? At the motor. Yeah, yeah. Motor on a dyno. The uh -huh. engine was built by QMP out in Chatsworth. Okay. And Brad Lagman and um, yeah, yeah. Mike Consolo. And, and then, then how about shocks? I'm sure you... They're still 1969 Coney's. No kidding. But they were double adjustable, so you can go in here with an Allen wrench, factory Mustang brackets, and things like that. I didn't alter any location points. So ultimately, you kind of could have built this car... More. More? New isn't better, in my opinion. New, yeah, yeah. New just means more headache to try to make it work. <laughs> you don't want computers in this thing? No, no. It's just... <laughs> Dated 1969 Coney double adjustable kind of period correct. Yeah. And nothing has really been changed. Underneath one or two bushings are not rubber, but yeah. the sheet metal control arm top and bottom and then chose so to- So still leaf spring rear? Yeah, leaf uh -huh. spring and there's a narrower to fit the tires. Tricks Aluminum of, bolts and things that, that people don't know or can't of care. Tricks the trade, right? To, yeah, to, it doesn't cost anything to put aluminum bolts on it. I just figured fender falls off, I don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But the lightness was the main aspect. Because otherwise you get these things built like this, you're up in the 3,400 pound range, probably 32, Well, 34. I don't know, it seems to be, 28 seems to be a number everybody says they gotta get to, and 28, they weigh 3,000 pounds stock. Right. Back seat, heater box. So from 3,050 to I'm at 25, that's a lot, that's two, two people. Even two people are riding in your car. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it does drive better with a passenger. Does it? That's a, puts the balance on that side again, even though it's somewhat balanced, but yeah. it's, it drives better with an extra person in it. Yeah. <laughs> then what do you go to transmission-wise on this? Magnesium, Tex Racing, NASCAR transmission. You can shift it without the clutch. Oh, really? Things wear out. Eventually it has to be changed. But yeah. It's lighter and things like that. The rear end is just a Mustang rear end. It's nothing advanced. And the brake drums and stuff were the 65 Shelby brake drums, Mustang stock. stock straight off. A little bit up. wider, which the Shelbys were wider. And then There's something so in the rear. Small, of this. So it's a smaller front disc. And it's bigger disc, of actually. This bigger is a, than what it would have been. Bigger, come thicker, with. wider, and the T Bird caliper, which is still a 65 component. The rear end has a sophisticated watch link that I built. It keeps the car located, and that was my own design. And then it has a torque arm in the middle of the car where there's two shocks, one for application of the gas and one for braking. They, now they make one that does both. So the lower one is controlled wrap, they call it. So when the motor wants to break the tires loose, it kind of controls it a little bit. And then the blue one works when you hit the brakes the other way. Now they make a shock that does one does both. That's kind of old school. Wow, that's so cool, man. And then I, the cage is our own design, maybe too much pipe. Um, but it kind of looks good the way it is, I think. I think it looks great, and it's and I gotta imagine it's extraordinarily functional, right? I mean, yeah. you know. Then the roll bar, or the roll cage, I decided to go out in here. I got tired of getting in a car and having my knee being irritated by the roll bar. Plus I have two or three inches more if I ever get side, you know, T-boned. So the bar is never bothering me against my left knee all the time with a clutch. Great. And then the doors got hollowed out and stuff like that. Boy, this sure did. <laughs> I got carried away with the holes. Sometimes I regret it. Sometimes Is I, that again to lighten it? Yeah, I was just bored, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna take too much to plug every one of those holes, but. I and then I don't it. have any gauges except four idiot lights. So and then what's those come the on, one gauge I see? Yeah, that's the gauge. Pressure? I put it in afterwards, a little fuel, oil pressure. Or oil pressure, gotcha. 
<laughs> you really, you don't, you don't want to tack? No, I don't. Because you know the sound of the car, you know where you're at. I can look. There's some place in there. I have a little digital thing that I can look at the corner of my eye and see it. But uh, the less I know, the better. <laughs> I like your sticker right there. Faster, yeah. you fool! You wrote that to yourself. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but I, you know, I'm sitting here in a factory Mustang as tall as I'm six five with my left leg completely straight. There would have been another foot where the Mustang high beam switched in the early days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that tell me how far back, that's quite a ways back. And I didn't want to see any of the roll bar. So you only see this piece here. Oh, that's great how you did that. And I, I don't like when you see the roll even case. Even the padding, dude, give me a break. I mean, if you're street driving and you don't have a helmet on, that's going to hurt. Yeah. That's smart. Again, so the further higher away you are, hitting your helmet hurts, you know, so that's the whole concept. Was, oh, that's where your tricep is. That's the where the, the nine quarts go in there. And then all the fancy pedals are all on the ground. They're not mounted from the dash. What are the? What is that pedal box? That's a Tilton Engineering uh -huh. design. Uh -huh. I can move it from side to side, forward, backward, in different locations. Because sometimes when you're done with a car, it doesn't feel right. Now you can't change it. And then the steering wheel moves six inches in and out for different drivers and things like that. Really? Yeah. So I made it adjustable. You're always limited when you're done, and then you don't like it, and you have to start over. So I made it just with an L, and I can move it and slide it. Is that whole thing like your design again? Is it Which design? The steering? The steering setup. No, they sell that one. It's okay. collapsible, they say. So in an accident, I don't think it matters. It's still going to hurt. <laughs> You're right. But I, I wanted to make it adjustable. I mean, it's my car. I don't care if anybody else fits in it, but the seat moves eight inches and then the steering wheel moves accordingly. And my daughter's a little shorter and she can almost operate the clutch. <laughs> I like how you got the look of no mirrors on the car, but you actually have side views. Right. You know, I got rid of the drip rail molding here, the factory Mustang. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was probably the hardest thing on the whole car to do. Was it really? Because it, it loses everything on the roof, starts to change, because it's when they built them, they were pinched and welded, really sophisticated. You take that off, <laughs> a lot of work. Yeah. Did you paint the car on No, yourself? I just had a regular shop. Okay. Lucky they were work with me. I, I built a rotisserie and then spin it and then they can sandblast it and bring it back and forth each time and they were able to work with me and uh, it turned out way too nice actually for a black car i mean yeah no, the car looks great i mean consi Thank especially you. considering that you track it yeah I mean, four years now nothing competitive because the, mm -hmm. you know the rock chips are going to get thrown at it anyways but i worked on a lot of cars that did vintage racing and i guess i call it the their egos are a little bit different and they have one track of get up front and win and everybody else doesn't matter yeah and that's not very fun i, I like working on people's cars and they have fun when they have fun with each other yeah but meanwhile then you got the faster you fool <laughs> sticker right in front of your face <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's the thing i like this this was thought out right because to, the door to... wiggles without it and when you look to the other door you don't see it you see the case oh you goes... really tucked it in behind yeah. wow that's slick that took some thought to match yeah, it up. I know. That's the point. <laughs> I know. He's telling me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of stuff a lot of people that do custom vehicles don't think through it. And then afterwards, it just looks off. Something looks really yeah. wrong with their vehicle. That's what takes you know? time, you know. But the difference between the customer wanting something and the shop building it. It's always a mistake between, you know, they don't have the connection to see what really is going to look like at the end. Yeah. There's a lot better people out there than me that can make that look better, but... <laughs> And you did, so this is all Lexan? Yeah, that... Um, Front and rear, right? Yeah, Again, that's for the lightning. high-end helicopter window with mm -hmm. coatings like your fancy glasses and uh, mm -hmm. getting that to look like this, that was a lot of thought too. And how do you mount it? So I use little spacers down in between here so that each one's a different height to get it to fit right. Wow. And then I did the new car black trim so you don't look stupid without the black trim. And I figured a little I love radio that. control Thank bolts, the uh, little mini bolts that they have. and. <laughs> It's easy to take on and off to some degree. I haven't taken it off yet. Each spacer is a little different just to get, because if you go too tight, it gets funky and looks really tacky. Mm -hmm. and you get the but the windows are, you know, pretty, they're supposed to be 300 times stronger than glass. That's what they say. And they're DOT approved. Airplane window, they call it, kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not as sharp as clear as a window. It's, and then it puckers back and forth and gives you an illusion, a little bit like taking your sunglasses uh -huh. on and off. Uh -huh. That I don't like too much. I like a glass window. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. It's exact. And, yeah. But me being further back, it also gives me a panoramic view now. I see more of the track, but I'm not bothered by the heat as much because I'm further back. So uh -huh. it's weird sitting so far back. My buddy Chris's car, he's got a 65 Mustang that's that's a well-known, called Vicious Mustang. It's oh, yes, really okay, crazy I've seen that one, build. yeah, a silver one. 
that one, same thing, the engine's pushed uh -huh. way, way back. But when you sit in that car, it's similar to the perspective you're describing right. here, where you're back further, you get more of an uh -huh. overall view of everything around you. It's pretty yeah. nice, actually. Well, it all paid off to being, you know, 49 and a half to 50% as far as the balance. Yeah. And I didn't do it that way, the scales in the beginning, it ended up that way. Yeah. I mean, the battery's over there, but it doesn't weigh much. And Can we pop the trunk as well while we're here? Yeah. I'm, I always like to see what's back here, especially when stuff's been relocated in a fuel cell, of course. Yeah, a little battery over there. Mm -hmm. Boy, you really did just cut holes everywhere. Yeah, it's, it's don't remind me, but... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how many gallons is your That's fuel 20, cell? That's 22. That's common Mustang gas tank is everybody it? buys. Mm -hmm. I have yet to build a nice leather shift boot because it does burn your eyes when you're driving fast because the fumes come in, you know. So that's on the oh, menu. I didn't even think about that's that. That's on sure. the menu. Sure. So I'd like to do some kind of sophisticated leather shift boot, maybe Porsche leather. <laughs> nice, I like and it. And then keeps the fumes from coming in because yeah. that, that has started to bother me a little bit. I, I, that I can I Because there aren't really any, well, there's holes everywhere, but. Yeah, well, having that I can really <laughs> understand wanting to do that. It's, it's loud. It, yeah, it's loud. It's, is it a, it's, but you said it's not straight piped right now. Now I have Super Trap, the famous disc wafer things that the motorcycle Harley guys all buy. They're multi-discs. Uh -huh. And there's 20 on each side, which is almost equal to straight pipe. But it is a stainless straight pipe. But I put those on for uh, for this shoot because uh, it is a quite loud. Yeah. I mean, it's loud the way it is right know, now, it's, man. It's I, really it's loud. really louder before. <laughs> so at Willow Springs, it's a handful. Friends of mine said they still have flashbacks how loud it irritated their eardrums. Yeah. Some of the body stuff on this, too, is like, a, obviously, no bumper. Yeah, no bumper. That's Wait. all original. Weight thing again? Oh, they look good without bumpers. My friend and I decided we don't want to build flares into it too much. So you, did you roll, cut them it and is, roll them? It is, but it doesn't lose the Mustang look. Not at all. And it's, you know, smaller tires front and rear. It doesn't run a gaudy back But you tire. cut that inner part, so. Yes, the original one is two, and it's another bunch of, but it was on a rotisserie sideways, and I was standing up next to it, working it, so it was very helpful. Like I said, I work on elevators, so I made a rotisserie out of old elevator pistons, five-inch pipes, adjustable, and then the car would rotate on a side, and I could work standing up. But I also wanted to keep smaller tires. You know, they're supposed to have seven, eight inch rims, not nine and a halfs. Mm -hmm. So it's the same size. They call it squared, I believe. Yeah. Same so size. So what is it, 15? Yeah, they're still 15. So that's the other thing. 15 is by eight. 15 by eight. It's Phil Schmidt wheels. Many years ago, he made those to copy the Trans Am magnesium type wheel. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I got lucky to get six of these. So yeah. again, I stick with the traditional look. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I'm stuck with you know tires like this that aren't really for the street. And they, Are these bias plies? Yeah, they're bias ply. Yeah. Everybody tells me they're only good for four 15-minute sessions, four heats. So when you go out to a familiar track, every four 15 minutes, the tires are trash. So you figure yeah. 15 on Friday, 15 on Saturday, and 15 on the main race. If you were vintage racing it, by then it's... You're done. The 16-inch rim, you have more multiple sizes and street tires you can drive. Again, I chose to be with 15s. Yeah, because you wanted to stay really true yeah. to what the car is, the the race version of a Mustang, but period to the period. I mean, it's it's not a Mustang, but it's <laughs> it looks like a Mustang, and that's <laughs> kind of what I chose to do. Yeah, like I I, I just love the. Um, you know, the million dollar builds where the interior now looks like an AMG car. And uh, uh -huh. I, I enjoy that. I genuinely enjoy that. But I also love guys like you that want to stay correct to a period and an era, but you do it like all the way there. You go all the way with it like you've done with this car. Everybody that sees it at the car shows or some of the things they say, how could you have thought so much stuff out? And it's all thought out very well. I'm yeah. not an engineer. I'm, but I do have engineering likings, and I'm German, so I like little things, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. That's all right. I know a little German. He's sitting over there. And then being spoiled from 18 years old, I got out of high school. I went to work on BMWs for 20 years, so right. I learned on a more advanced car than anybody else's car. I got spoiled. No, but again, I mean, it, it brought me up in a very good quality of I, accuracy. I, personally, I love German cars, especially. I'm, a, I'm nutty for Porsche, you know? Uh -huh. When people talk about a German car being over-engineered, my first thought is, well, if you're going to go out and go fast, don't you want it over-engineered yeah. rather than under-engineered? That's exactly you know? right. It's ultimately providing a better driving experience and, and safety in the end. That's I mean, right. that's not a bad thing, you no, know? No, everybody wanted that car, and I grew up with it from 78 to 90, whatever. Yeah. It seemed like everybody wanted a safe car, and it should on the freeway and not go anywhere. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Painting it black was about an hour of 
stopping it from being painted black because I know black cars are only good for five minutes. And it's, it's so a good. gorgeous car, it's but it's, great. I live on a dirt road and it's one of those things that um, black is very nice, very hot. Yep. And you only get one in your lifetime, I think. I don't think I'll ever want another black car. I put the fan on for this event just in case we have to get stuck in a street light or something. But it has a NASCAR radiator, which the cooler's built into it, things like that. You know, so it never needs a fan on the racetrack, even at 120 degrees out in the button willow. So you uh, added the fan. Today for this weekend, I mean this week rather. Yeah. But, but you can see the spacer on there. it. That gives away what, how far it shoved back. <laughs> Man, that's, well, and just seeing the gap from the yes. radiator to the engine, I mean, it gives you a real sense it, of how far it's set back. This motor is the second motor. The first motor was non-dry sump. And I can only go so back before the steering was rubbing the crankshaft. Yeah. Because I had a notch steer oil pan to fit the crankshaft clearances. So that was, again, the limiting factor of how far back I went. Gotcha. So the dry sump, it doesn't have that pan. It's flatter. Yeah. So uh, the bigger the radiator, I never thought a big radiator was that important, but it is needed. And the engine doesn't run that hot, but it's when you idle, then it could be an issue. But you don't I think It's idle probably a lot happier on the track than it is driving the streets of LA. Yeah, it's, um, don't drive it too much on the street because um, I don't want to take any chances or somebody stealing it, I guess. I don't blame <laughs> you, man. I don't blame you, dude. I'm glad we talked about this, though. I meant to ask you about it before because it's such a massive yes. radiator. Yeah, it's 13, 14-ish, that kind of deal. Pistons are actually molded to this combustion chamber of the cylinder head. Where they take a cylinder head and flip it upside down and then they decide through a laser or something how the piston would completely fit the chamber. And normally the piston is the generic fit so it doesn't hit, but they make it fit like a perfect glove in baseball, I would guess you would say. <laughs> and that just gives more compression, which isn't always more horsepower. Just another way we had it done. Yeah, amazing, huh? really something else. Let's do the camera up part and go for a drive.
raw driving experience, man. Gosh. I wish we could block off roads. It would make life easier, man. Hey guys, we're just gonna go past you and we're just gonna casually go by. Holy shit, is this just a beast of a car. It's hot, it's loud, it's obnoxious, it's raw, it's visceral. I love it, it's just bitching. Definitely not a street car. Wouldn't want to spend much time on the streets driving this car, but absolutely amazing. And I love how he stayed period correct with it down to everything other than it doesn't have magnesium wheels, but literally period correct 65 Mustang race car. Just badass. Seriously, big thanks to Ron for coming out and hanging and shooting with us. And I really appreciate you guys sticking around and being with us and helping us to continue to grow the channel. I will see you in the next episode. All right, man. Later.